So last time, we talked about the astrological aspects of the current time going into next year, 2022, and how difficult it's been for everybody. And doesn't look like it's getting any better. In fact, it's probably going to get even more tense. And there's a big blow up going to happen beginning of next year. So we talked about the situation, but we didn't talk about was the remedy. What is the cure? How do you avoid being influenced and dragged down by all this negativity? So I want to talk a little bit about that today. And the cure or the remedy is found in good old Bhagavad Gita. Yunjam evam sadatmanam yogi vigata kalmasaha sukhena brahma samparsham atyantam sukham ashnute Steady in the self, being freed from all material contamination, the yogi achieves the highest stage of happiness in touch with the Supreme Consciousness. Good old Anushtup Chanda. <laughs> Those who know Bhagavad Gita will understand what I mean. So, the very first line of the translation or phrase, steady in the self, with a capital S, this in itself, if you really understand it, is enough to counteract any kind of material misery, or suffering, or inauspiciousness. So let's unpack this. What does it mean? Steady, first of all, means something that's uh, unwavering, unflickering. Huh? Something that doesn't change. Steady. So one should be steady, but in what way should one be steady? In the self. And the exact words that Bhagavad Gita uses are Sadatmanam, yogi. Uh, evam sadatmanam means always. Sadat means always. Atmanam means the self. And yogi is one who is in touch with the supreme self. This definition is given in other places in Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> so what does this mean? It means that yoga is more than just a certain set of exercises or postures or breathing. Yoga means to get in touch with the Supreme, the Self. Now there are different forms of the Supreme, different levels, different flavors, huh? because the Supreme is omnipresent and actually is everything. Actually everything that exists is a form of the Supreme. But we usually don't see it like that. So specifically what is meant here is the self, the supreme consciousness, atma. So atma is not only the supreme consciousness, it's also our consciousness. In other words, we are consciousness. We are not the objects of consciousness. We are the perceiver, not the perceived. See, this we explained in great detail in the series on Drigdrishya Vivekaha. 
but I'm going to explain it in a short way here. You want to know where is God? <laughs> Some people say, can you show me God? Huh? Well, God is you. Specifically, consciousness. Consciousness is the lamp that does not waver, even in a windy place. Consciousness is the one thing that remains steady and true, no matter what else changes. Consciousness is that which never leaves us. In the conversation with uh, Richard Clark the other day, another link, we discussed that and he was talking about how he gets people to understand the self, especially if they have no experience in spiritual circles or scriptures or anything like that. He says, what is it in your life that never changes, never has changed, and never will change? And of course, the only answer is consciousness. <laughs> Consciousness is steady, or I should say awareness, turiya, is steady, while the other states of consciousness, jagat or waking consciousness, svapna or dreaming, and sushupti or deep sleep, are always changing from one period of time to another. And certainly the objects of consciousness, beginning with the mind, the emotions, the feelings, sensations in the body, the senses, uh, the body itself as a whole, one's material identity and activities, and of course, the different objects in the material world are constantly changing. Sometimes it's pleasant, sometimes it's unpleasant. Sometimes it's kind of in between. But in any case, it's never steady. The only thing that you can say is steady is the self, the capital S, the supreme self, Turiya. As we described in an earlier video, Turiya is that state of consciousness which has the other states of consciousness as its object, objects. So from Turiya, we can be aware of waking, dreaming, and sleeping. From Turiya, we can be aware of the contents of those states of consciousness. But the content of Turiya itself is the other three states of consciousness. This is a deep insight. So how do we remain steady in that view? Because uh, this is a Jatavada. Here's the good old chart. Jatavada is right at the top. It's associated with the Sahasrara, the thousand-petaled lotus, the source of consciousness. What is the source of consciousness? Awareness. And in that state, the only thing that one can be aware of is awareness itself. I am, and I am aware that I am. So Ramana Maharshi used to use this in his conversations. You can read it in his book, Talks with Ramana Maharshi. When someone would come to and say, I'm not self-realized, I'm not enlightened, can you help me? He would say, are you aware? They would go, yeah. Are you aware that you're aware? Mm, yeah, yeah. So he says, that's Turiya. Awareness of awareness. Consciousness of consciousness. See, there's no need for any long, drawn-out process of realization if you can get this. The problem is... Most people aren't qualified to get it. Why? Well, look down at the next line of the translation. Being freed from all material contamination. Huh? 
Vigita Kalmasaha. Vigita Kalmasaha. Freed from material contamination. Who is there, huh? Who is freed from material contamination? Like Jesus said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And of course, nobody was ready to claim that. <laughs> In those days, people were more sincere. Nowadays, people would just lie and say, oh yeah, here's a go, wham. <laughs> but if you're sincere, you have to accept that you are loaded with material contamination. <laughs> Every time we think of ourselves as the body, as the senses, as some material identity, or as some kind of actor, or possessor, or enjoyer, or knower, then we're falling into material contamination. All this has to go. Huh? You are not the ego you are looking for. <laughs> I wish I had that mystic power, like Ramana. Ramana could just look at someone and wash them free of all contamination. What a wonderful miracle. <laughs> but see, he's not even an ordinary yogi. He's a, an incarnation. He's an avatar of Arunachala, Shiva. So he has powers that ordinary mortals <laughs> would never have. But uh, others who imitate him are not on the same platform. So beware. In any case, one has to perform the lower stages of yoga. Karma yoga and bhakti yoga. To free oneself from material contamination before one can be steady in the self. Now, that doesn't say that one could be aware of the self for an instant or even a few seconds by forcibly holding the mind still. But of course, that doesn't last. The mind is very tricky and slippery. <laughs> it's like trying to grab an eel or a fish. Huh? Just try to grab a fish. They slip out of your hands and go swim wherever they want. So in the same way, as soon as we try to stop the mind by some effort of will, it slips away from us and goes jumping all over the universe like a crazy monkey. So how to still the mind? To purify it. To fill it with impressions of transcendental meaning. One of the best ways to do that, of course, is with a mantra. Mantras usually contain a name or a, a phrase that relates to God in some form or other. Of course, uh, we advocate and uh, recommend the Maha Shodashi Mantra. Here's a series on that. But if you're not ready for that, huh? if you're not prepared for that, you have to take a lower mantra, like Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, or any one of the many, many Shakti mantras that we went over in the Lakshmi Tantra series, or in the series on Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, which you definitely should download and read. And I'll put links to them in the video description. So, to sum up, the way to become free from the various astrological difficulties and life problems that result is to be steady in the self. That means becoming free from all contamination and remaining steady in the realization that the I am, the consciousness itself, is the goddess is the Shakti, is Brahman. Huh? Oh, one thing I want to point out from the uh, verse again. Sukhena Brahma Sangsparsham. 
Sukhena, happiness. And Brahma, samsparsham. Notice the text doesn't say to be uh, steady in awareness or linked up with me, Krishna. Or it doesn't mention any other name of God, only Brahman. Because Brahman is the self. And to realize Brahman is the pinnacle of self-realization. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.